Well, graphic novels have been around pretty much since the 80s. Um, there have been graphic novels before that time, but uh, it was pretty much the 1980s which, uh, in the US market, saw the development of um, the term graphic novel coming into popularity, and that was with three graphic novels um, in the mid-80s. Uh, Mouse by Art Spiegelman, that, that was a Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novel, and then it was followed by the collections of the, the Batman the Dark Knight and um, Alan Moore's The Watchmen miniseries, which were hugely successful comic series, but they collected them together, and those collections were marketed as graphic novels, and they were very, very popular with the uh, public and started to see the development of um, the graphic novel as a, as a collection format. Marvel Comics around that same time had also done a, a line of graphic novels which were in a different format. They were slimmer, um, oversized graphic novels, more in the style of the European style graphic novels of the day. Um, and they um, were original stories based on um, new concepts. So there were the two different styles, the collections of existing stories and then there was the brand new stories which were basically still both known as graphic novels. During the 1990s, um, manga, Japanese comics, uh, became really popular. Um, and they boomed in the late 90s and, the two, uh, and in, the no uh, in the 2000s. Um, a large number of graphic novels were collected and came into the market and there was a huge uptake of readers coming in to see this new genre which told stories in different ways and um, show the art styles which were very different than what was normally in the American um, style of telling comics. And they were in a smaller format, a lot more accessible on a wide range of topics. And it brought in a huge range of new um, readers to, the, to the, uh, the, the hobby of reading comics and graphic storytelling. Um, there's, the manga is a, a bit on the wane at the moment. We're finding that uh, I think there's been an oversaturation in the market, but it's still a very popular format which brings a lot of people into reading comics. So that has helped um, establish a graphic novel format as well um, in the West. There's plenty of genres in uh, graphic novels. Uh, the most common, of course, in American graphic novels is the superhero comic. That is by far the most prolific um, genre out there. Uh, Batman and Spider-Man being the biggest sellers there and X-Men as well. Uh, the uh, Dark Knight, Batman Year One, a, lo a lot of the, these graphic novels um, have now been made into movies as well. So there's that tie in uh, into popular culture even further. Um, but there are a lot more genres uh, being explored now. Uh, cr uh, crime in particular, horror, uh, fantasy, uh, science fiction in particular, of course, that ties in a lot with uh, superhero stuff. But you also have a lot of uh, indie comics, alternative comics, which are really uh, showcasing more personal stories, autobiographical stories, political stories, um, uh, stories which are a bit more relevant and which more so socially conscious. So you, you actually can get a wider variety of comics and genres in, in the graphic novel format than you could at any other time at the moment. Um, there's some companies such as Image Comics at the moment that are really focusing on trying to bring out shorter um, serialized comics on a wide range of topics and genres. So I would say Image Comics is a really good place to have a look at some fantasy and uh, science fiction and even crime books. Uh, companies such as IDW or Dark Horse, you'll find they have a lot of uh, licensed pro products. And that, what I mean by that is uh, companies uh, or movies or uh, other major companies uh, are bringing their ideas into comics. So Dark Horse, for instance, do, do a lot of Star Wars comics or they do Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And those graphic novels are hugely successful. IDW, they do Star Trek, they do True Blood, which is based on the Sookie Stackhouse novels. Um, a lot of novel adaptions and now the novels are being adapted into comic books and so you're finding a lot of other media are coming into graphic novel format and are actually opening up those stories to an, a, a different reader as well.
superheroes are here to stay. They've always been here since the 1930s, um, since they were created. Um, I think manga, it's just uh, oversaturation of the market. I remember back in the 1990s, people were saying comic books were dying at that time, that they, they were, weren't relevant anymore. And in fact, during the 2000s, comics exploded again through um, the various times with movies and stuff. So I think genres such as crime, fantasy, science fiction, a lot of the media crossovers, especially with gaming, video game related uh, books, they're booming at the moment. They're on the rise as well. Things like Man of War and Call of Duty and World of Warcraft. There's a lot of other elements out there that are coming in which tie into science fiction and fantasy. So I can only see those areas growing because uh, they've in a way been neglected a lot of the time by comic book writers as they've been too heavily focused on superheroes. The superheroes sell, but I think they're finally realizing, the companies are finally realizing that there's more ways to tell a story rather than just having someone in tights flying around. So uh, we're um, actually seeing a really good time uh, of, of uh, experimentalism in comics, I think. Uh, you're finding um, that uh, more avenues for people to see comics, whether it be in um, digital format or in, gra or in libraries, you're seeing a lot more libraries taking up um, graphic novels. And um, I think uh, with the cross-pollination into TV and movies, uh, that these other genres are going to actually uh, get more, more people experimenting with um, stories in those genres rather than less experimentation. Superheroes, though, are always going to be here. Uh, you'll find that uh, people are following or reading graphic novels or comic books for the similar reasons. They're following an author or they're following a writer or they're following a character or a, or, or a genre. But I think uh, a lot of the time it's a character or the creator. They're the two main ones. Um, you'll find that, uh, as I said before, Batman, um, uh, we find in the, in the comic store, um, is a huge seller. And people will continue to, to buy a range of Batman graphic novels or spin-off graphic novels, Robin or Batgirl or Batwoman. But at the same time, you'll find that um, there are a lot of well-respected um, writers and artists out there now. Um, Alan Moore, for instance, who does Watchmen or, uh, as you know, Watchmen or From Hell, um, has also got other books out there which a lot of people don't know about, uh, a line of comics from DC Comics called ABC Comics, where uh, books such as Top Ten or Promethea or Tom Strong, which are just as strongly written books but are not as well known to the public. But, you know, uh, right, um, fans will seek out those other books and start reading those books. Frank Miller, who's started um, uh, out doing a lot of stuff at Marvel and with his Daredevil stuff, moved into Batman with Batman Year One. And then a lot of people would know Frank Miller from Sin City. Um, that's a series that he did for Dark Horse Comics. So he's worked across a whole range of companies, but people follow his work from company to company as he, as he develops his own work. Um, so. Um, Artists are the same. Um, I think uh, you're finding a lot of people are, f are following authors from, from the written novel into graphic novels at the moment. Uh, Joe Hill, um, he's a, an emerging writer. He's got a, a fairly strong fan base. He's Stephen King's son. He's done some fantasy and horror, horror novels. He's now just won the latest Eisner Award as best writer for his horror comic book series called Lock and Key. Um, it's it's a, very popular series. It's, they were possibly me making it into a television series as well. So there's a lot of cross pollination between writers and writers and artists, and people follow these writers and artists as well as the characters um, as as their key points on how they sort of um, discover graphic novels and discover s graphic storytelling. But but then there's also um, classics of other people like. Dan Klaus, who's done Ghost World. A lot of people may, for instance, have seen the movie uh, and um, then gone and read the comic book, but not realized that it was a comic book before it was an actual, actual movie. So you're finding that there's people coming backwards and forwards from the various, various media um, into comics, out of comics, and back into comics. Um, a great example of that at the moment is Game of Thrones, George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones. Started as a novel, has recently been an acclaimed television series, and now it's just started as a comic book, which is a sellout comic book. So 
it can, all these um, writers are really getting their stories and their concepts across to a wider audience these days because of the various um, media they've got to actually showcase their, their stories. Some of the writers that I think that are going to be sort of uh, standout writers in the future, they've already got a, an established fan base at the moment, but um, two um, writers that I think that you should keep an eye on are Brian Azzarello, um, well known for 100 Bullets, um, a crime, uh, labyrinthine crime um, series that he's done for Vertigo Comics. He's now d uh, diversifying into um, some um, more mainstream books. Uh, he's done a Batman, some Batman graphic novels and um, he's uh, got a new series called Spaceman that's just out as well. He's uh, one of those writers there that are actually, his strength is telling new stories rather than using existing superhero characters to tell stories. Another uh, writer who started doing, um, telling stories of his own, but then uh, has now moved into the mainstream, who's got a, a lot of credibility at the moment, is Ed Brubaker. He's um, done an acclaimed run on Captain America. He was the writer behind the death of Captain America that happened recently. And he's also done um, a wide range of uh, crime books called uh, Criminal, uh, another s a series of uh, sort of superhero crime story books called Incognito uh, and Sleeper. And um, he's uh, developing a lot of the concepts that are coming out of Marvel Comics at the moment. Uh, I think he's a strong, strong writer to look at as well. Other writers that I think you should be looking at are Bill Willingham. He's the uh, creator of Fables. Uh, he's made his name, he's been around for a long time, but with Fables, which is a fantasy based series, um, his, uh, his um, uh, popularity has exploded. His, uh, idea, his, his the way of telling his, um, putting a fantasy element into a real world context has been really well um, received. And you're finding that Hollywood and um, TV is following that now with some TV shows such as Grimm and Once Upon a Time now focusing on that fairy tale theme. So I'd, I'd say he's another person to watch. And another person to watch as well uh, is Brian K. Vaughan. He's the writer of Ex Machina. Um, he's uh, also done Pride of Baghdad. Uh, he's worked on Lost. So a lot of these people work in other, other fields as well. I think he's another guy to, he's very strong at telling stories. And oh, another person that I, I particularly like myself, who I think um, has a really distinctive style, which is very different, is Darwin Cook. Uh, he's done a series called DC The New Frontier for DC Comics, which was a 50s and 60s reimagining of the DC Universe. Darwin Cook's uh, done a series called Parker, which it focuses on Richard Stark's um, sort of true crime um, detective, basically, or confidence trickster, I should say. And it's um, done in a very much a 50s style, uh, very visually distinctive, um, very short, sharp um, writing. And um, it just, I think it goes to show that there's a lot of writers out there telling stories in different formats, different ways. Um, uh, Dan Klaus is um, another writer that's been there for a long time, still bringing out stuff. But um, yeah, I think the main thing is to just go out there and explore, explore the library and check out the stuff that's come in into the library through the expo and see the different writers and artists and different types of genres that are there because that's the way to really get excited about comics is to do the exploration and as I call the sort of the detective work of you know, working out what, you what actually appeals to you um, in a graphic novel format.